From Demon's Souls to Elden Ring, every single title From Software has created has been new and innovative. And while as of recording this video, From Software hasn't actually released any definitive information on their next title. Inside of interviews, From Software, aka Miyazaki, has done a Tom Holland and has decided to accidentally spill a little bit of information. It's nothing definitive, but there are some dots we can connect and sort of piece together a picture as to what From Software's next games will be. Without any more diddly daddling, please sit back, relax, grab some succulent, juicy, tender, and sensational prawns if you want, and enjoy. The way we're going to figure out what the next game is is something that I actually just talked about innovation. Every single From Software game has innovation, from Sekiro with its parry combat, to Bloodborne with its guns, and to originally Dark Souls and Demon Souls with its combat. Miyazaki has canonically stated that Elden Ring is not the end of From Software's ingenuity. A lot of people took it that Elden Ring was going to be From Software's magnum opus and they weren't ever going to reach any more higher highs. But Miyazaki seems to think differently, while others were simply stating that Elden Ring was the culmination of everything From Software has done, which is true, Miyazaki still thinks there's more that he can push, and I believe From Software's next game is going to be that. Let's go through the list of all the genres and sort of time periods Miyazaki has done so far. We've had Sengoku Japan with Sekiro, we've had medieval shit with Demon Souls, Dark Souls, and in part Elden Ring. We've had Victorian Britain with Yharnam and Bloodborne. We've had Open World with Elden Ring. We've had linear storytelling with Bloodborne, Dark Souls, Demon Souls, Sekiro, you name it. There is only a few more genres I believe they can push in regards to ingenuity and new games. Of course they're going to continue to make new and amazing stories, but I think when it comes to genres and settings, there's only so many they can use. Which leads us to today. While I have had multiple ideas of what this game could entail, there are two that I truly believe could be the case. Starting off with the one that I least believe out the two, actually has to do with all the Spellbound rumours. Now before you say, I know, I know, the Spellbound rumours don't have anything concrete to them. So I'm not saying that they are actually the case, but I think the idea of Spellbound is actually a really interesting idea that I don't think that we've actually tackled before. Of course we've had witches and wizards all throughout From Software's games, but an actual centred game around the 1500s in a culture half engrossed in witchcraft and the other half engrossed in hating it. I think the idea of being spellbound to some sort of destiny is the sort of From Software forte that we see in basically every other game. We're brought into this new world and we're filled into this new role. Only, perhaps, we are spellbound. There, I said it, I said the thing. I think it's a really interesting time period that From Software hasn't tackled before. I think there's a lot of interesting possibilities and it would add a really new, unique take to From Software's formula. Not to mention that muskets were invented and introduced in 1521, so that would fit into the time period and considering this, you could have musket combat inside of the game. There's all sorts of possibilities that I think From Software would absolutely be in their best condition to utilise. For my next suggestion, I actually think it could once more be in the 1500s. The 1500s were a time of innovation, not just in weaponry, but also travel and expedition. A lot of new lands were discovered in this time period. I could definitely see us going on some merry trip on some missionary journey to spread the word of whatever we're doing at that time. Whatever our goals are is based on our class perhaps, only to shipwreck and now we've got to navigate this new world with a new culture, perhaps mix in some gods every now and then as we love to do that in From Software's games, and all sorts of shabam. There's once more so many possibilities, and knowing From Software at some point in time, even if it's not this game, they are going to utilise it. Because make no mistake, it is a very underutilised premise inside of From Software's games. Now I said, I said too, but I've bloody bamboozled you because I've got another one, a little, a little honourable mention, as to what could be another premise. One that is actually my favourite. Yes, I know, don't scream your pants off, I know I bamboozled you. My idea has to do with Egyptian culture. There are a lot of interesting periods inside of Egyptian culture, not to mention their heavy influence of Egyptian mythology, for example, in all of From Software's games, there's some sort of hint of, oh, you're brought back from the dead. Every single death mechanic has some sort of reason. In Bloodborne, you're a hunter of the dream. In Dark Souls, you're chosen undead. 
In Sekiro, you've got the blood of the divine heir, and in Elden Ring, you're Graceborn. From Software's next game is not going to be any different. Inside of Egyptian mythologies, there's Khonsu. I am terrible with these kind of names, so if I've butchered it, I am so sorry. But Khonsu, he's the god of the moon and time. He controls time. Am I the only one that thinks it'd be really cool if you could be his champion and then you could be sent back into the realms of men and do your whole duty over and over again? Only for the ending to be you betraying him and becoming motherfucking Kratos? Alternatively, Anubis, the god who guides mortals into the underworld, I could definitely see him being like, oh yeah mate, time to go, but uh, actually not, you're going back to the realm of the men. I know that doesn't really link up with much mythology, but hopefully you can see the idea of where I'm going with this, as in From Software's games, yes they take ideas from mythology, but they don't always follow them one to one, for example Marika. We've talked about some really interesting premises for the games, but I think there's one thing that's been slightly overlooked in this video, and that has to do with genre. From Software spiced up the formula with the Elden Ring, making it an open world game. And while I don't think they're going to make it open world again, as they've already done that now, I do think there is going to be something new and interesting about the next game. And what that is, I want to talk about right now. I actually think it's going to be a looter shooter. Yeah, okay, I got you again. I got you again. From Software loves innovation, and I'd actually love to see a From Software game more focused on a Metroidvania-esque feeling. I'm a massive fan of Hollow Knight. I've beaten it quite a few times, I believe, and I've done up to the fourth Pantheon. I absolutely love that game, and I love Metroidvanias. I think a Metroidvania-esque game that is 3D would be something really, really unique and new to From Software and something we hardly have seen all throughout gaming. And yes, I know there are slight Metroidvania elements to From Software's games, like needing certain bits to progress to other bits, but I mean a fully, fully true to form Metroidvania, where everything is sort of revolved around it, with added bits that we're used to, like the combats, the amazing bosses, the amazing quest lines and storylines and characters, all with the little From Software magic kiss to the cheek. Considering From Software is already kind of half there with their formula, I really think a full true to form Metroidvania is a really big possibility when it comes to From Software's next game. And to be honest, each of these ideas could come true. You may or may not know, there are actually four to five games in development at From Software. They are bringing in other studios to work on them as well, but that doesn't change the fact there are four to five games currently in development. Each of these games are probably going to be vastly different to each other. Miyazaki has said that he wants to kind of move away from the Souls formula into something new. Don't get me wrong, I highly doubt they're going to just abandon Souls. I think at least one of these new games is going to be new. Like, new, new, new. While the others will probably have the Souls touch. Or perhaps this new feeling is another version of Sekiro, which is a Souls game at its core, but it's very different to the other ones. Something I simply just have to mention when it comes to this is when this new game or these new games might be coming out. A lot of people are banking on Summer Game Fest and to be honest, I really like that idea. We haven't had the hollowing phase which is a bit of a from software not so dewy. They like to draw out these time periods so they can make the best game possible. But the reason Elden Ring took so long was because of the sheer scale. Known from software, they're not going to just jump right into open world. They're going to do something else. I'm more inclined to believe that the time it's going to take to make these new games is going to be the same time it would take to make Dark Souls 3, Bloodborne, Dark Souls 2, Dark Souls 1, you name it. I don't think they're going to go as big as Elden Ring again, because once again, it was a new thing they wanted to try, where it was pushed everything together. Hell, maybe they'll surprise everyone, and they will. If it's going to be that case, I reckon it's probably going to be next next year's E3 or Summer Game Fest. If they're going with a much smaller game, like Bloodborne, then I really do think there's a big possibility that next year we might get an announcement. Not a release, mind you, but an announcement nonetheless. Sadly, everyone, that's all we have time for today. I really hope you have enjoyed this video. I've absolutely loved making this video, if I'm being completely honest, so I hope you have as well. If you did enjoy the video, 
please consider leaving a like and subscribe as it greatly helps the channel and lets me know you're enjoying the style of content. Without any more further dilly daddling, please don't you dare go hollow friends and may you find your worth in the waking world. Goodbye everyone.